Welcome to INFS 325 Public Relations. In Section 4, we'll be talking about communications in public relations. You remember a key word in the definition, in some definitions of public relations, highlights communications. So communications is very important in public relations because if you do not communicate, your publics will not know exactly what you are doing. So in this session, we are going to state the importance of communication. We'll look at some goals of communication. We'll look at some traditional theories as well as contemporary theories. And then we'll explain the main components in the communication process that we would want you to consider. So let's look at a few definitions of communication. It's a process of exchanging information or even imparting ideas and making oneself understood by others. Now once somebody understands you, whatever you say, the person understands you and gives you feedback, that is communications. Now public, uh, public relations practitioners should be professional communicators. They should be able to write, to speak, to listen, to promote, and to counsel. Now, communication is very important because it helps to disseminate our ideas, it helps to us to express our emotions, it helps us to educate, it also helps us to build relationships, and then it also helps in decision making. And of course, communication is very important in entertainment. What are some goals of communication? All planned communication must have a goal. And a few of them are to inform, to persuade, to motivate, and to build mutual understanding. There are a number of traditional theories that we'll look at under communication. The first is the two-step flow theory, where an organization will send a message first to the mass media before it goes to the general public. Then there's also the concentric circle theory, where the idea is that information should flow in circles, that it should start from great thinkers to disciples to disseminators to political activity before it comes to the general public. I believe this time we don't think of such um, theory for communication. Then of course you have the Pat Jackson five-step process of communication where you set um, the idea is to build awareness, develop a latent readiness, to trigger events, intermediate behavior, and also to change behavior. So these are some of the traditional theories. And of course, if you want to go into detail, you just get your reading list and go to the specific chapter which talks about the traditional theories of communication. Let's move on to a few contemporary theories of communication. So we have the Grant, the Grant, uh, Grant and Hunt public relations models, which talks about the press agentry, which is simply a one-way communication, where the message is just sent from a source to a receiver. The I idea is for you to persuade your receiver. Then we also have the two-way asymmetric communication. And the idea is to persuade through the classic PR functions of research, objectives, objective setting, communication, and then evaluation. Then the two-way symmetric communication, where there is mutual understanding rather than persuasion. And that is really what pu public relations is about. We have other contemporary theories that you can read about in, under your reading list. Now, let's look at this basic source, encoder, message, decoder, and receiver um, communication process. And that is really the process that we actually will talk about. So who is the source of a communication process? The source is the central person organization is doing the communication 
or communicating. And the source usually knows how the message has to be received. And so the source will have to use what you call an encoder. And the encoder is the, lang the idea in the mind of the person, and he needs to know how to be able to encode what idea he has in his mind so that the receiver would be able to receive it. So there is a source at the beginning of the communication process. The source encodes the message so that the receiver will be able to understand whatever the source is saying. So the encoder or the encoding can be in words. And of course, the words are, are potent. So words can do many things to many people. And so it's very important for the source to be very careful of the encoding stage during the communication process. Words mean different things to different people. So depending on their, their, their culture, their race, their background, whatever message you are sending using those words can mean different things to different people. So once the message is encoded, so you have the message and it's encoded and it's coming from the source, it is carried through the communication media, either through speeches or newspapers or news releases. And the message can have different effects. For the communication theories, the message can be the content. That's the message. Some people, the message is the medium. And for some people, the message is the person. So if they are looking at the message being the person, they are looking at the way the person is delivering the message. You can imagine when you go to church and you have a good preacher man. For people, some people, the message is the person who is delivering it with the force and energy that the message comes out with. So such people, they may not really understand the message, but for them, the person delivering the message is just enough. That is the message. For some people, it's the medium. Some people, is the content, okay? So the decoder, now the message has come. The message is meant for a receiver. But then, the message will have to be decoded first. That means the message must be fully understood before the receiver can act on it. So the receiver will decode the message depending on the person's own perception. So this is a typical SEMDR communication process. Look at where the source is. The source sends the information, and the information is encoded, and the, the encoder comes through a channel and you get the message, the message goes through the receiver, but the receiver will have to decode the message, and then you get a feedback. This is popularly known as the Shannon Weaver model of communication. So we are still with the receiver. The receiver gets the message, and we said according to the way the receiver decodes the message, the receiver can be biased. We also say no two people perceive the message the same way. And why is that so? Because a, a, a receiver can have personal biases. And personal biases can be influenced by stereotypes, or even by symbols, by semantics, by peer group, or even by media. Let's look at stereotypes. Maybe the person you are talking to has already some impression about people. He thinks that a certain category of people are very intelligent. And so if a message is coming from those type of people, then of course, whatever message, whether true or false, because he has a stereotype of the, per the person delivering the message, the information is wholly true. If he has another view that coming from a category of people, the message can never be true, then that is his view. He thinks that that message that you have delivered is never true. So we have symbols. Some people know that when you show them certain symbols, you are either insulting them 
or you are praising them or you are giving them certain negative messages. So a receiver who decodes the information based on some of these personal biases may have different interpretation for the message that you have sent. And so what happens? Your feedback. So the communicators must get the feedback to know that the message actually that you sent actually went through. So you are not communicating unless your receiver hears your message, understands it, and gives you a feedback or he reacts to it. To it. And that is the final link in the communication process using the source, encoder, message, decoder, receiver, and feedback channels. Okay. So what happens when the message is now clearly understood? It does a number of things in PR. It can change the attitude of people that you want to influence. It can even crystallize the attitude. That means now whatever they thought of, now they even firmly believe it. It can also create a doubt. People will even doubt your message the more. Or your message can do nothing. It wouldn't move anybody. It wouldn't persuade them. They're just there. They've heard it, yes, but it didn't do anything to them. So that can be the effect of your message when you're working with PR. So to summarize all this, public relations professionals must know how to use words to communicate. The encoding stage is very important. If you do not use words to communicate, you may not get a desired expectation from your publics. Communication must always follow performance. And so if you are communicating either using your publications or even using your public, your website, your idea is to be able to win your public's attention to you and to perform better and to create goodwill between yourself and between your organization. So for your activity, you will have to describe what communication is all about. Understand the acronym SEMDR and see how best this particular communication process enables the public relations officer to be able to communicate effectively with his publics. I hope you have understood this lesson and you have enjoyed listening to this particular session. Thank you.